Earlier this year, after redistricting in New York, we talked about how DCCC chair Sean Maloney was trying to push out a progressive by opting to run in his district, Mondaire Jones's district, instead of the 18th congressional district, which is what Sean Maloney had represented for years. So that happened. Mondaire Jones is now out. And now it turns out Sean Maloney is out as well, because even as DCCC chair, he lost the race that he pushed Mondaire Jones out of to Republican Mike Lawler in a district that Biden won by 10 points. So to say that this is an embarrassment would be an understatement. This is career ending embarrassment. Literally, this is never show your face in politics again, not as a lobbyist, not as a political commentator on MSNBC. You should not be in politics at all if that just happened under your watch, under your leadership. Now, it's not just this race where he royally screwed up Democrats, because understand, Republicans at this point in time are only projected to take the House narrowly by a couple of seats. So because of Sean Maloney's incompetence and hubris, well, he may have very well cost Democrats the House. Another is the 5th Congressional District of Oregon, where progressive Democrat Jamie McLeod Skinner ended up losing after she defeated incumbent Democrat Kurt Schrader earlier in the year. And this comes after the House Majority PAC and the DCCC, again run by Sean Maloney, abandoned this race entirely. And as Ryan Grimm points out, they abandoned this race because the DCCC thought that she was too progressive to win this particular seat, and that money was instead spent on Sean Patrick Maloney's race, where he ended up getting defeated by a Republican. But the reason why they claimed that this race was essentially a lost cause and they abandoned it, as Ryan Grimm alluded to, was they thought that she was too progressive to win that seat. But she was running against a multi-millionaire Republican, and Democrats have held this seat for a very long time, but she defeated a corporate Democrat who was essentially like Joe Manchin. And over the past couple of years, a lot of Democrats, they saw how these corporate Democrats aren't actually very good for the Democratic Party. They're saboteurs in a plethora of ways. So there was actually a lot of grassroots momentum for Jamie McLeod Skinner. It's just that she was going up against the Republican with a lot of money, but the DCCC didn't want to invest in this race. And this is another seat that they could have easily won if they just tried. Now, the blame is squarely on individuals like Sean Patrick Maloney, who were in control of electing Democrats. Their entire job was to elect Democrats, but he's not taking responsibility for these losses. So after the election was over, he tweeted out this picture of himself with Nancy Pelosi saying worth it, which I don't think anyone knows what that means. Worth it that you lost this election, cost Democrats control of the House, possibly. What are you even talking about? Now, he also, on top of that, took a shot at AOC and essentially blamed her, saying, quote, the last time I ran into AOC, we were beating her endorsed candidate two to one in a primary, and I didn't see her one minute of these midterms helping our House majority. Now, first of all, let me just pause before we get to AOC's response. It is your job to get Democrats elected. You are the chair of the DCCC. That's not AOC's job. And in the event AOC tried to help Democrats win some of these tough races, well, Democrats would blame her if they lost because they're going to say, oh, well, you're too progressive. So that association is toxic and the Republicans are just going to call the Democrat here you know, a socialist. So it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. If she doesn't help, she gets blamed. But if she does help, she gets blamed too. Now she responded to Maloney on Twitter saying, let's make something crystal clear. Sean Patrick Maloney courted me for donations to swing races. And it was the first thing I did this term. Over a quarter million for Democrats this cycle, DCCC facilitated some, and now he denies it. If he isn't aware of my visit to California and efforts we put in, that's on him. Because of Democrats, Democratic Party abandonment in key areas, statewide victories depended heavily on driving up numbers in progressive areas like mine and New York Working Families Party. To our knowledge, I was the only NYC House Democrat in a safe seat to run a full-throated heavy field operation for Get Out the Vote. As for him not seeing me, perhaps it's because he, as a party leader, chose not to see nor value prominent members of his party for years. Lastly, many moderate Democrats plus leaders made it very clear that our help was not not welcome nor wanted, despite our many, many offers, yet we found ways to try to help from afar. So for them to blame us for respecting their approach in their districts is laughable. Take some ownership. 
And she's absolutely correct about that. And this sounds redundant, but I have to point this out again because it's so absurd. As chair of the DCCC, you have one job and one job only. You get Democrats elected. You make sure that Democrats control the House of Representatives. And he was so bad at that job that he didn't even get himself elected. Now, why was this? His race was very winnable. Well, it's because of hubris. Now, before we dive into the article, I think that this headline from Slate sheds a lot of light as to why Sean Patrick Maloney, the chair of the DCCC, again, was defeated by a Republican. They write the inside story of Sean Patrick Maloney's face plan in New York. Instead of taking his own race seriously, the DCCC chair snubbed grassroots support and went to Europe to court donors. And the article is going to explain how his Republican opponent did the opposite. The New York Democrat may have been running the national party's most important campaign arm, but he had arguably the worst individual performance of any politician in his home state. Not only did he lose his race, but congressional Democrats underperformed in New York more than in any other state in the country. While Maloney was across the pond, the Republican National Campaign Committee and Congressional Leadership Fund, Republicans' two largest campaign arms, were pouring big money into his race, over $10 million in independent expenditures, while attack ads blanketed the airwaves, Lawler and and his team hit the ground, shoring up support. Internal polling began to reflect his growing advantage. Maloney dismissed the threat in an interview with ABC News, stating repeatedly that Republicans were lighting money on fire. But as it turns out, you were the one lighting money on fire, Sean Patrick Maloney. And some of the facts in this article are genuinely shocking, especially knowing that, again, this is the D triple C chair. I have to keep restating that because it's so absurd. So the, uh, chair of the Rockland County Working Families Party, they put him on their ballot and she's claiming that he never got in touch with them. You don't get in touch with one of the core grassroots organizations in New York. And on top of that, Indivisible, massive uh, progressive grassroots uh, organization. They have 400 chapters in New York and they claim that he made no effort to court their support. It's just genuinely shocking. So Sean Patrick Maloney represents everything wrong with the Democratic Party and how they do nothing but listen to consultants to their own peril. And the same is also true for the DNC. But I don't think that the current DNC chair is nearly as uh, arrogant and also ill-informed as Sean Patrick Maloney. You see, you can't keep listening to conventional wisdom a lot of races that you abandoned could have been the Democratic parties. Like, they could control the House and the Senate. And again, at the time that I record this video, the House has not yet been called, but it's projected that Republicans will retake the House by just a couple of seats. So all Sean Patrick Maloney had to do was not mess up royally. But he did. He messed up in the worst way possible to where his own seat was lost. And many winnable races across the country were lost. It's just truly insane to think about. And, and in Colorado's third congressional district, where Adam Frisch is just about a thousand votes behind Lauren Boebert the last time I checked, if he invested even a little bit into that race, that could have changed the result as well, even though that hasn't been called at the time that I record this video. There's so many close races that the DCCC refused to um, get involved in, and it just went bad. So they're lucky that things went as well as they did for Democrats, thanks to Zoomers. But just seeing the potential there, the missed opportunities because of the arrogance, like folks who control the election campaign arm of the party, it's just really frustrating to watch. So let this be a lesson to Democrats going forward. Do not take races for granted and invest in races if you want to win. Were you acting like a...